In this episode, we show you the oldest living human in the world that the Guinness World Records have missed, a unique ancient Japanese home on an Indian soil, and one of a kind open library to ignite the young minds in one of the cleanest village, Kigwema of Dreamland, Nagaland. That's Vibano, our guide for the day. A beautiful young and educated lady who was very proud about her village. Kigwema was noticeably one of the cleanest villages we have seen. The village alleys were clean to spick and span, walls painted in vibrant colors and coats, and piles of wood neatly stacked on the sides. The houses were beautifully adorned with vibrant plants. When we entered the village, we saw a few wooden gates beautifully carved with different tribal figures and signs that depicted the realm of their culture. Normally, you would see one main gate at the entrance of the village, but there were few of these which showed that the village grew in size over the years. Kids of Kigwema were taught to respect the earth and get educated. And this unique open library that we spotted while walking around the village is a statement to that. Though this brilliant idea was started by two brothers who were locals of the village, it soon gained popularity and people across the world started sending sponsored books to this village. Similar to what we saw in Zewame, there were these traditional houses that had this unique friend elevation. Families that became wealthy enough and gave a grand feast to the entire village were the ones who deemed eligible to put up these structures in their homes. So feast of merit is done when someone is rich enough to feed the whole village. Okay, okay. And, and when is the feast of merit? Feast of merit is like once you are rich enough to feed the whole village. You will do it. Yeah. Okay. And after that you will earn this thing. The two rounds on the right symbolized women's breast and depicted love and fertility. The middle sign was the symbol of cattle which symbolized wealth and the last one was the moon depicting the lunar calendar that was followed by the Naga people in the earlier years. These houses also had several cattle heads which I presume that was gathered after the feast and we could spot large caskets filled with rice at the front porch that would last the entire winter. The walls of the house were usually plastered with cattle dung, which kept the houses warm. Like how we saw in Longwa village, this village also had a morak, where the youth was taught about the history of their tribe. The people of the village were from the Angami tribe and spoke the language Tenyede. Do the graph and all about the village culture, ritual, everything. Okay. Yeah, it was detailedly learned from this house. It's like the dormitory, they all sleep okay. in the wooden bed. And also, like, they are like, a guard the village also. Okay. At the gates of the village, there were these massive cactus trees. In the early days, these were planted at the borders of the village to protect the village from any forced entry. If you touch, then you'll get some, like, I don't know, zin zin feeling like that sort uh, of, it, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. We then walked to the center of the village the place where it all started. Kiwema means uh, uh, it is translated into people who inherited the old house. Okay. So okay. first Kiwema we like arrived, uh, mm. we migrated from uh, Senapati, which is Manipur. Mm. So at we first we came here. We first settled in up. Mm. Those are the army army game base, right? So mm. we first settled there. So there are like two type of two two group game. First is upper and lower. Kigwema was the place where the Japanese troops arrived and stationed during the World War II in 1944. House of the General, the Japanese General, who came here. This was the house of General Kotoku Sato of the Japanese Army. They tried to take over Kohima 
to demonstrate the weakness of the British Empire and provide encouragement to the Indian nationalists. The house noticeably had a very Japanese style architecture, which was usually made of wood and slightly elevated off the ground to prevent the coal from entering through the ground. There were one or two bullet marks still etched into the walls as a mark of the memory of the tough times during the Kohima War. From here, he gave the com- uh, comment to the troops and all when there was like during the World Second World War. From here, from the window, it's, uh, we can go and see the Kohima Taklu ground, okay. you know, and okay. here we decide we can see the Manipur. So okay. they came here so that uh, they will cut the Indian army. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. I mean, they came between because our uh, Indian were this side and this side, so they came in between. This was the house of the oldest living lady in the world. We had a bunch of questions to ask her and was hoping that she was feeling well to answer I them. Know she's going to be one, two, one, one, two, one. That's Grandma Enoli Pupure Fuka. As per the villagers and her family, she is 122 years old. The villagers had celebrated her 120th birthday in 2021. This picture was from that village yearbook. Four children, 19 grandchildren, 63 great-grandchildren and 13 great-great-grandchildren. That's just amazing. As per the Guinness World Record, the oldest person living is a woman named Maria Branias, who turned 115 years in January of 2023. So technically, Pupere could beat this record to be the oldest living person in the world. But unfortunately, she doesn't have any valid documents to prove it. This is the tomb of her second son and he died in 2020 at the age of 84. That makes an age gap of 35 between her and her second son. Looking at all this and meeting her in person, along with what villagers here are vouching for, we have no reason to not believe what is being claimed. Facts are important. But not always facts are available as time can be a crucial thief to rob us of our own identity. She is also among the very few surviving elders who had witnessed the invasion of Japanese troops during the World War II when they arrived at Kigwema on April 4, 1944 at 4 pm. She still recalls the day that she carried her children on her back to the nearby village for safety and shelter. She just likes having somebody here. Bibano then took us to her cousin's home for some tea. You ready for some chai? Yep. The kitchen was a traditional Naga kitchen. A Naga kitchen would always have dried pork hanging from the ceiling. This dried pork would stay for at least a year. That's beef fat. Oh, that's beef fat, okay. Instead of oil, they'll put one piece into the curry. So the flavor also should be good and replaces oil. (laughs) (laughs) It's a a good tea. (laughs) Again, Paddy agriculture was quite prevalent in Kuguema as well. The beautiful sight of endless paddy fields laid in steps with harvested crops and in different hues of maroon, brown and green was the perfect way to end this beautiful day. Kiguema was not only absolutely beautiful and aesthetically pleasing, but it also screamed history and stories. This was yet another village that made us fall in love with this often misunderstood land of Nagas. Do not listen to those be careful while exploring Nagaland comments and visit these beautiful places on your own and you will know how supremely incredible and warm this place and its people are.